When the war started, I was standing in front of my locker changing clothes. I just finished breakfast and picked up some oranges on deck. About half shaven when all hell broke loose. We felt a rumbling, but we didn't know what it was and didn't think much of it. The first plane came over, we knew exactly what was going on. We could, we could see the planes uh, coming in. I thought, my God, those sons of bitches are here. Man, your battle stage. All I had time to get out of my locker was my wallet. It had $60 in it that I'd won in a crap game in the turret the night before. And there was a, another plane coming down. He was machine gunning everything. And I said, the, the, the bastards are here. I seen the rising sun and I thought, well, <laughs> this is, this, that's Japanese, man. They're bombing us. Guns and bombs. And in the explosion. We know we took two or three bombs just on the deck itself. And that bomb blew me back inside of the back of the missile. And I, it put me out of the, for a minute or two, headed from a battle station. Started firing at them right away, and we had 50 rounds of ammunition behind every gun and had to break some of the locks to get them. They always locked them up. I had a bullet in the I threw the calf of my leg. And 13 minutes is all, and it just boom. The bomb hit right after the number two turret here. When the big one went, uh, it was all over. They dropped the uh, bomb, armor piercing. And it went right into a million pounds of ammunition. It blow, exploded. And the bow of the ship came up about 30 feet out of the water and sailed straight back. Blew the whole damn bow of the ship off. And the fireball went about five or six hundred feet in the air and just engulfed us up there. The fire uh, uh, ball is what got everybody up. Uh, no place to go. And we had no way to get down from the middle was so hot that it was a good thing we had our shoes on. We started smelling smoke. Somebody said, get the hell out of here. It was over. I thought, well, we got to do something about this. We can't sit here and wait the ship goes down. We gotta do something. Started up the, up the ladder and somebody was in there blo blocking the way. I said, get the hell out of the way. He says, I can't. So I pushed him up through the hatch. And the guys started running out of fire and for 10 minutes there, we were just busy as a bee. When they come out of there, they were burned so bad, I couldn't tell who they were and they called me by name. Uh, one, one arm, maybe the skin had slipped off and the other arm was charred. Got the hold of a uh, ship that was tied up next to us. We got a, the attention of Joe George on the, on the vessel and he throws us a heaving line and... Uh, we drug it over, tied it off, and six of us got across that line. The vessel, vessel was lower than where we were at and we went down and down and down. And then to go back up to the vessel, that was when Tough, tough, tough. <laughs> I went up to the quarter deck and took my brand new shoes off that I just bought the day before. Laid them along the quarter deck, thinking I'm going to come back and get them. I ain't seen them since. Lieutenant Commander Sam Fuqua was the officer in charge. And he said, Get off now, abandon ship. You hear me? Abandon ship. And I said, Well, I'm not going. He says, Yes, you are. <laughs> I said, I'm not going. My brother's on. I got to fight. Well, he gave me a shell. Jumped over and swam to Port Island, which I don't swim. And everybody says, how'd you get there? I said, I run across the water. There were 1,522 assigned to the ship and 1,177 killed. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy.